Thanks again to everyone, and we wanted again to thank Christy for, pro for providing the projectors for uh, this weekend's event. So before you all run off, um, we asked you yesterday, for the, those of you uh, stalwarts who are still here, what were the top three takeaways from these two days? Anyone want to volunteer something? Well, while you're thinking about that, please feel free to come up to the mic. We'll, we'll do a couple ourselves. Do you have a few, David? I have one from this morning on distributed creativity. I learned this morning that a file is a living thing and that a bunch of them create a living community with other files. And at least as far as cloud services go, it looks like uh, it's clear the future will be cloudy. I'm <laughs> Your turn. Yeah. I thought, for, I thought that uh, it was interesting how much the, the aspect of the cloud did come up. And, and, and uh, there were an awful lot of, uh, of collaborative issues or collaborative uh, things going on, even in gravity. So I'm not sure if that means that there are clouds in space. There may not be sound, but there are clouds in space. <laughs> Uh, and certainly, I think for me, one of the highlights uh, was second screen, although two years ago we talked about it here as an idea, and certainly Rob Hummel should have been here today. I, I was fascinated. Uh, I think that is really exciting stuff for me personally, one of my takeaways. Yeah, I, I, that, that was uh, being, being, frankly, allied with, with Rob on that. That was just one of those real game-changing things for me. That, that's actually something I could see doing as a, as a big experience with an audience now. Feel free to come up to the mics okay. if you want to chime in and join us. It's very lonely up here with David. Uh, I learned today, David, that I guess there is something beyond pixels. They're called voxels? Voxels, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What'd you think of that? Uh, and one of my wish lists has been a glasses-free 3D cinema experience, it looks like we might get one. So if we can combine the glasses-free screen, 3D screen, with Alex's worlds, uh, this could be a really interesting place. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, anyone else have something? Mm -hmm. What was the number one? Anything. Did anyone learn anything this weekend? Show of hands? Clap of hands? <laughs> yes? <laughs> everyone is too tired? OK, Alex, thank you, thank you. I thought the gravity panel was pretty interesting. Uh, the one question I wanted to ask them we didn't get to was, you know, with all these different tools, the combination of sound and image, did, did it affect their storytelling? Did the technology drive some of the, the creative choices they make? I guess we'll have to wait for a later time. You know, that, that's one of the themes I thought we got to over the weekend was um, we're, we're at this kind of point where the tools are not the same anymore and we're, we're needing to invent new tools, um, some of which we just saw, but we need to invent new tools. Uh, Josh said it this morning where you can't use, you can't put the old tools into the cloud. You know, we need to invent new tools. It's, it's a place for new, new things. And, and I think the same thing happened when we listened to, the, to them talk about how gravity was put together. Uh, that, that was a, an entirely different way of putting together a movie required years of work to develop the tools to do that. And I think the rest of this is going to go the same way. Yesterday's uh, uh, panel on the, the human visual system and the future of cinema, and we, we really found, I think, that if we look at the future, uh, we're limited by our ability to absorb an experience through our eyes and our ears, and, and, and that's where the technology uh, is going to have to grow. So it's a Do you think there may be a future for smell o vision after all? <laughs> that that and, uh, and Ooh, rain, rain. We have a Barry. participant. Barry, what did you learn? Let's see. Um, well, I think, I think that the, uh, the session on high dy dynamic range was, was very important to me. Um, I know there are high dy dynamic range um, televisions out there being sold right now. And I think that's going to be the impetus, the actual um, motivator for the exhibitors to install um, laser projectors, ultimately. Um, I think this is going to be really, finally, a, a, a situation where 
you can get something at home that you can't get in the theater, and they're going to have to step up. These, that's the impression I got. Yeah, Great. I think uh, Michael Cioni said that yesterday, and, and he actually made a rather big point of it, that the, the theatrical experience is threatened by the internet and what we can get into the home with uh, these new displays. David, I have a little problem with that. Um, if you, I don't see the advantage of highly compressed 4K over Netflix. <laughs> I really don't see that. I, I, you know, I think it's 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 cool. And it'll look good, I guess. But I, it, w how is it better than HD? You know, seriously, if it's so highly compressed over the, over the internet. I think it's a very good question. <laughs> Another comment? What did you learn? Uh, lots of bits and pieces, but the the main takeaway, I think, is was very well um, presented of uh, one of the last presenters, the world building uh, uh, approach to uh, looking at uh, creativity. Uh, if we look around us about every field of science today, uh, in order to make major advancements, we need to learn, discover, and work out new ways to collaborate together. And this world building thing is really a good expression of that. That's my major takeaway. Yeah, I, I comment on that as well, that uh, I might call it something slightly different, but if you think of virtual ecosystems, what a perfect complement for virtual reality. So very, very fascinating work that's going on at USC. Uh, I, I have to admit I, I was taken by that. I'd like well. to have my own crystal ball uh, <laughs> uh, for one little thing. I think uh, next year, uh, summit would be called uh, something else than cinema technology because we've seen now that because of the technology, because of the, the going away of film, all the tools are merging really uh, and with the coming of UHD TV, we're all using the same tools. Uh, so that's another thing, it's the cinema and television tools are really close together now. Yeah, I think we did We've touch. We've seen a yeah. lot of that. We touched on that yesterday, but I, I, I think it's something that could be reset and reset. Um, things are uh, the same facilities that do this work, the same software that do the work for motion pictures, feature films, and for television are out there. Um, but one of the points that goes along with that, and we we came to today, was that new production models, the, the way the gravity's made, the way world building works, and, and that they, they can't be supported by our traditional production and post-production methods. And so maybe we shouldn't call it cinema next year. Yeah, Might I have a actually had the same NAD. thought. <laughs> uh, te maybe it should be the technology summit on storytelling, because that seems now to be more a common theme, as the technologies are beginning to converge. but. Uh, Good point. Chris. Uh, I learned how big a problem versioning was. 35,000 versions of a film? Holy yeah. crap. <laughs> that's a big problem. That's, that's real. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess the other thing was uh, I, I didn't realize that I, we're gonna, I think we're going to see a lot of pushback on silver screens. That's really interesting, too. So, a couple of tips. Yeah, okay. thank you. Anyone else? This is no time to be shy. <laughs> oh, we got someone that one. Uh, one of the things I thought might be interesting is uh, this whole idea of the high dynamic range. And we're, um, from a display standpoint, if we can get to consumer displays showing high dynamic range faster than we can get to the cinematic side in terms of theaters and everything, it just seems like there's a lot of push towards HDR and could we get, you know, what will happen, you know, who gets there kind of first. I know we have mm -hmm. it, um, there's examples of some really high-end expensive systems, but from a, you know, more kind of consumer standpoint, you know, would that, you know, going back to what Michael Cioni was talking about, would that be, you know, kind of a tipping point? I, I, it's a challenge, it, it's, it really is. Um, the, the physics are sort of on the side of the consumer displays, frankly. Uh, getting a lot of light on a big screen um, 
even if we only try to emphasize uh, or, or put light where it's needed, uh, it still takes an awful lot of uh, optical watts to do that. So, uh, but we're working on it. Well, uh, I guess I learned about two or three brand new file systems. I've learned a bunch of new acronyms. <laughs> uh, I think we all it's do. all fantastic stuff. <laughs> there is a slight worry there that technology moves at one speed, diffusion of knowledge moves at another speed, uh, adaptation and adoption of new technologies moves at a third speed, and there is actually a distance now between the top level production and if you like the lower level productions. Yeah. And I am left with a slight question about who's overseeing this, who's managing this. There's a lot of great organizations here that seem to feel responsible for this and take it upon themselves. But there were a lot of very bright people talking about not so much blowbacks, but simply a density in the movement of information. And I got some very positive things and some new worries. So I feel I gained a lot. Okay. Great. Well, I, you remind me of a comment Chris Cookson, who was one of our keynoters yesterday, made a long time ago that I still think will be true. There's content and consumers, and everything else in between is replaceable. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, to your point, technology is moving at its own pace. And technology is getting to the point, you know, one of the things we, we think a lot about in terms of uh, the human visual system, it is an amazing piece of technology. But finally, the technology we have around us is beginning to catch up with the human eye. And at some point, we're going we're gonna to do that. And then with all the developments in audio, our technology is going to catch up, and the human being will be the limiting factor. But thanks for your comment. Mr. Daly? So yeah, I, I won't comment on the old oh, many, many things I've learned. But um, I don't know if it was intentional in the structure, but I noticed a lot of times we were back and forth from technology to more art, back uh, the storytelling and then the technology. And it was, I think, actually a good exercise for the brain to uh, force yourself to switch gears like that uh, throughout the day. Uh, kind of triggers a lot of new thoughts. And uh, the second screen, what I guess I'll comment on is that so that one aspect of the second screen, a little bit different, I guess the more common one is when people bring just their outside world into the cinema, um, uh, more just like texting uh, situation. So then I started thinking of the converse of that where people want to bring the cinematic experience into the real world. Uh, so a, you know, a more routine example is people listening to the radio of a story while they're doing manual labor. That's uh, been you know, going on for a long, long time. But will we reach a point with augmented reality glasses where people will be basically experiencing cinematic storytelling while they're uh, basically navigating through their everyday life? <laughs> Ooh. We, we might have the technology to do that. I'm not sure we have the brain power to do that. <laughs> OK. But well, I, I think I wanted to go back one questioner on the uh, uh, we, earlier I had kind of talked about the fire hose of knowledge that, that we were going to get or we were getting this weekend and so much stuff coming at us. And, and, and the same thing's true for most of us that work in, the, in, in this industry. That, uh, as he said, the, the technology just keeps rolling along and, and I think that John Hurst's panel was a really good example of that where we've been working on these standards. There were things we could have done four, five, six years ago, and we haven't done it yet. Um, and, and we really need to, to take some very positive steps to, to ensure that the new technologies that are invented for a real reason uh, actually get out there. But ultimately, it's a business reason. The, uh, the exhibitor's not going to do it if it doesn't provide him something else. Uh, the post-production facility or group of people, however it works, they're not going to do this unless that new software actually, they, they derive a real benefit from it. So that's one of the challenges with having a lot of new technology rush at us. We've got another question over here. 
So the one thing I got out of this weekend, one of the fascinating things about attending this every year is seeing all the new things that are coming. But for those of us who have to then take everything that's created and make sure that it survives, um, I'm suddenly starting to blow my own mind in how much data wrangling and metadata wrangling and you know, future archival standards are gonna have to be worked with to make sure that everything that people create in this room from all the stuff that we've seen, uh, how, how we're gonna make it survive for the next 100 years. Well, there's, yeah, James, there's that uh, petabyte per show. Uh, I saw that on a slide yesterday, so. Suddenly I'm <laughs> thinking uh, investment in data storage probably would be a good long-term, you know, well, uh, re the retirement money. strategy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And maybe with that comment, uh, we'll close with a comment from Elizabeth, which, uh, well, she reassured us basically that while everything may and likely will change, nothing will change when it comes to the basics of storytelling and great storytelling. So with that, we'll close this year's TSC, and thank you all for coming. And thank our chairman. <laughs> Thanks again for everybody being here. Have a good NAB.